It was a chilly Hamatan evening in the heart of Kano, one of the bustling cities in northern Nigeria. The city, usually lively with the sound of traders and buyers in the market, had settled into unusual stillness. The air carried a scent of dust and dry leaves, a reminder of the dry season that had begun to peak. Inside his modest two-bedroom house, Alaji Musa, a respected businessman known for his fair dealings in the local market, sat with his family after the evening prayers. His wife, Amina, was serving the evening meal, a delicious pot of tuwo shinkafa with miyang tushe, a local delicacy. Their children, Hassan, Zainab, and little Bill Kisu, laughed as they recounted their day at school, filling the house with warmth and joy. But unknown to them, the peace of the evening was about to be shattered by a series of events that would forever change their lives. As the family settled down for dinner, Bala, a young man with a rough past, was preparing for something entirely different on the other side of the town. Bala had grown up on the streets, making ends meet through various means, some legal and some not. Life had been tough and he had fallen in with a gang of armed robbers led by Garba, a notorious criminal known for his ruthless operations. Tonight, they had planned a high-stake robbery. Their target, Alaji Musa's neighborhood. Garba had received word that many wealthy traders lived in the area and that it was time to make a hit. Bala, who had grown tired of the criminal life, had been coerced into joining the gang for this one last job with promises of a big payout that would finally allow him to leave this life behind. As the gang gathered their weapons and mapped out their plan, Bala's heart was filled with a sense of dread, but there was no turning back now. Back in Alaji Musa's house, the family had finished their meal. Amina was clearing the dishes when a loud bang echoed from outside. The children froze, their eyes wide with fear. Alaji Musa immediately stood up his instincts alerting him to danger. Stay inside, he ordered his wife and children as they moved towards the front door. But before he could reach it, the door was violently kicked open and several masked men stormed in, brandishing guns. Everybody down, now, Garba shouted, his voice rough and commanding. Amina screamed, pulling the children close to her as they all dropped to the floor. Alaji Musa, trying to remain calm, raised his hands in the air. Please take whatever you want, but do not harm my family, he pleaded. Garba grinned behind his mask. We know what we want, old man, and you are going to give it to us. Bala, who was positioned by the door as a lookout, watched the scene unfold with a heavy heart. The fear in the children's eyes reminded him of his younger siblings, whom he had left behind in the village years ago. Guilt gnawed at him, but he forced himself to stay focused. As the robbers began to ransack the house, taking money, jewelry, and other valuables, Amina whispered prayers under her breath, hoping for a miracle. But little did she know help was already on its way. Just as Garba was about to force Alaji Musa to reveal the location of his hidden safe, a loud siren pierced the night. The sound grew louder, and in moments, the flashing lights of police vehicles illuminated the house from outside. The robbers froze in shock. Bala's heart pounded in his chest. He hadn't expected this. None of them had, but what happened next was even more unexpected. Garba, sensing that they had been set up, turned his gun on Bala. You! You betrayed us! He snarled. Bala's eyes widened in fear. No! I swear, I didn't. But Garba wasn't listening. Just as he pulled the trigger, a gunshot rang out, but it wasn't Garba's. The sound came from behind and Garba slumped to the floor, shot by one of the police officers who had just burst into the room. The other robbers, seeing their leaders down, dropped their weapons and surrendered, knowing they were outnumbered. As the police secured the scene, Bala remained standing, shaking from the close call. One of the officers, a stern-looking man named Inspector Ahmed, walked up to him. We've been tracking this gang for months, Inspector Ahmed said, his voice steady. It's over now. Bala looked at the officer, his mind racing. I, 
I didn't want to be part of this. I was forced into it. He stammered. Inspector Ahmed studied him for a moment before nodding. You will have a chance to explain yourself at the station. For now, you are under arrest. Bala didn't resist. Deep down, he was relieved. This was the end of a long and painful chapter in his life. The next day, the news of the foiled robbery spread throughout Kano. People spoke in hushed tones about how Alaji Musa and his family had narrowly escaped a tragedy thanks to the timely intervention of the police. At the police station, Bala sat in a holding cell, waiting for his fate to be decided. He knew that his involvement in the robbery would not be easily forgiven, but he also hoped that the authorities would see that he had tried to save the family, even if indirectly. Alaji Musa, grateful for his family's safety, visited the station to thank the officers who had saved them. When he saw Bala, he recognized him as one of the robbers, but something in Bala's eyes made him pause. Who is he? Alaji Musa asked Inspector Ahmed. He's one of the gang members, the inspector replied, but we are still investigating his role. He might have been coerced. Alaji Musa nodded thoughtfully. Sometimes people do the wrong things for the right reasons or because they see no other way. I will pray for him. Months passed, and Bala's trial finally came. The court, after hearing his story and the testimonies of the police and even Elijah Musa, who had spoken on his behalf, decided to show leniency. Bala was sentenced to a reduced term, with the possibility of parole for good behavior. While in prison, Bala found a new purpose. He began working with a rehabilitation program, mentoring young men who were at risk of falling into the same life of crime he had once lived. Years later, when he was finally released, Bala returned to Kano, a changed man. He sought out Alaji Musa, who welcomed him with open arms, offering him a job at his shop. I believe everyone deserves a second chance, Alaji Musa said with a smile. And so, Bala began a new chapter in his life, leaving behind the darkness of his past and embracing a future filled with hope and redemption. The story of Kano's unfortunate armed robbery attack became a tale of forgiveness and second chances. It was a reminder that no matter how far one strays, there is always a path back to the light if one is willing to take it. Alaji Musa's kindness and Bala's redemption touched the heart of many in the city, proving that even in the darkest times, humanity and compassion can shine through. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed this story, please like, share, comment, and subscribe if you are yet to. Your support means the world to us. Thank you and have a nice day.